Yeah, the shit won't ever change, man. Recording Whoa. in progress. It's telling me I'm being recorded so I can <clears throat> inform the FBI yep. on you. <laughs> to the federal bullshit yeah. inspectors. Yeah. I mean, they're already listening because it's you. Because they know to keep an eye on me. Yeah. Because I'm full like, of bullshit. Yeah. You're the most yeah. of the bullshit. The, the mostest of the bullshit? Yeah. 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 All right, I, I'm gonna pick an icon. So instead, instead of turning my camera on, I'm just gonna make it show one picture of the both of us. So therefore, I don't have to edit anything. I can just upload this. Yeah, that's fine. So, in case people are wondering, we're already talking. This, this therefore, I don't have to cut out the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will. Oh, I guess. I like I will. after all this time, the quality of your podcasts have not gone up. <laughs> No, not. well, I mean, normally I do video, so you know we can uh, show little clips while we talk and shit. I haven't done audio since you. Well, I just I'm not really into the video thing, and because you break you know. cameras with your face. Well, and you know, well, I bought this computer. It's like a gaming computer, but it assumes you're gonna buy your own. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. <laughs> you're gonna buy your own, like. Because you're supposed to be a gamer, your own microphone and your own like yeah. camera, webcam. Because you want like the fancy shit to go with your gamer girl chair. Gamer so. girl chair? You have like a, a a gamer chair that's shaped like a girl, so it hugs you while you play. No, is that the thing now that you have like a specialty chair that only the gamers and gamer girls have that fits your ass better? Or I was gonna I say, what's know. the difference between a gamer and a gamer girl? You sexist pig. Other than you know, know. Twitch, that gender. Yeah. <laughs> but then aren't they gamer boys? I'm just a gamer boy. Sure. That reminds me. Do you remember back in the day when uh, remember the band Millen Colin? Yep. Remember they had a song called Material Boy. Sexist. I, <laughs> I think it was a direct shot at Madonna, though. I think that was. It wasn't just random that they thought that. Oh no! I know that. I'm just saying, sexist. But they didn't have a song called Skater Boy. No, because that's Avril Lavigne, who's also <laughs> sexist. Um, I don't know if you've seen that uh, thing that's been posted around that is a concert happening in the States. It's like the When oh, We Were Young. Emo, emo Kit concert. What's it called? Like When, when We Were Young. Or, oh, yeah. When We you Were Assholes. They, they named it after a killer song, but the killers aren't on the fucking docket there. Because <laughs> they weren't emo enough. I mean, the killers are as emo as Bob. What is, wow. I think the only killers uh, music lyric I remember is, uh, are we human or are we dancers? That's fucking emo. That's the emo <laughs> yeah. fucking thing I've ever emo. They just Unless he's talking about the rain. Purple they didn't have hair like we do in these photos. That's the problem. I still don't have hair like I do in that photo. <laughs> no, neither do I. I always yeah, thought those I were Dr. Dr. Roxo's backup dancers hats. <laughs> they are cocaine. <laughs> That's what they sell at where were we at Dollarama? Yeah. The dollar store. <laughs> well, yeah, you yeah. see it. Yeah. <laughs> number one above our heads. Yeah. Two number yeah. one. <laughs> they kind of the glare makes them look like dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what we were. So you know, so yeah, sense. and I don't mean less sides, I mean you and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're no, they're exclamation marks of like we're having an epiphany in that photo. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what that epiphany is yeah <laughs> uh, i think we're alone now no that's that's tiffany not Tiffany. anyway <laughs> so from that terrible concert of uh, things that were pretty much everything on there is 20 years old so we are now officially too old for that to be relevant to us because re referencing that like avril lavigne is on that concert and her album came out 20 years ago her first like yeah that was our that was our first year in college when you and i decided that after listening to her single that she would never be famous <laughs> yeah but it wasn't that yeah. single though it was a single that because when they brought bmi brought that to the, the station we were we're doing stuff with to, to listen to to say what do you think about her it wasn't that song and that song no. was not released whatever well, that was song. It was, it was complicated, wasn't it? Right, and then Skater yeah, Boy came out. That, but that. that's not the that's not the song we were listening to. Yeah, you're right. It was like just a song off the album. But I don't even know if it was from the album because when they were pitching her, they were like they gave her a whole different image. I remember the photo was her like 
dressed sitting playing an acoustic guitar by a by a fountain oh that's and, right yeah and like, she was supposed to be like a like a sarah harmer or something yeah that was what they were going with and that's what the song was kind of and we were like that's bullshit and then she became big the next year but she listened to people like, like not her but i mean bmi listened to people like us they, they listened to us it. just us specifically it was just you and i who yeah we, we stood up in that class and i was like those two fucking clowns hated it <laughs> Yeah. you're canceled bitch everybody else was giving it like like an option it was like saying well i think this and you and i were just like no never no bullshit shit, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so all of you wiener kids at that <laughs> um fucking when we were young concert this summer it's because of us <laughs> it's true yeah you know all those other bands because- like blood on the dance AFI, floor and all AFI that is there right yeah they're there yeah that's what i thought afi uh fuck my chemical I romance are getting back together po- for I that can picture the poster in my mind but i can't i think bright eyes and uh i don't know a bunch of assholes Wait, bright eyes isn't yeah, that a killer band, song just a bunch of assholes. <laughs> a whole bunch of assholes gonna be there <clears throat> but um <laughs> i i can't visualize the poster because i've seen so many spoofs of it where it's like yeah. when we were young and it's just like showing candy that i ate back then someone posted yeah. the, a when we were young and was literally showing 2002 bands but they were all like the most like hardcore and nasty 2002 bands that no one remembers except for like gutter skunts <laughs> who were actually listening at that time like you got your pig destroyers and your cattle mutilation and stuff like that. what was up with that those those a lot of bands metal bands that kill murder animals. animals i wonder there's a big veganism movement now yeah. when we were young people our bands murdered animals <laughs> or uh anal cunt that was one of the ones i remember from that time what period. was the uh fuck goblin cock <laughs> yeah i mean they weren't hardcore but there was that's no, that's the kind of shit that i enjoyed good. Yeah, that what was 2005 for me. The spider cunts, yeah, they were a Canadian thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, spider cunts are only a Canadian thing. Yeah. Um, there are no spider cunts anywhere well, in the world but Canada. You should put that as the title of this podcast. <laughs> there are no spider cunts. <laughs> spider cunts anywhere but Canada. <laughs> oh, because you really, that's a, a big memory for me was the, ironically, spider cunts, other than performing at it, had no connection to the title. There was the Spiderlands Punk Festival in Marmoreau every year. So around like 1999 to 2003, there are always posters up around every small town for that. And it was written the same kind of way. It was just a blur of names. And at the top said Spiderlands Punk Festival. Oh man, is this the, is this the, the festival thing that you told me that uh, the, the dude from Our Lady Peace puked on somebody? No, 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 no. That That's was different. No, that, that was a legit thing. No, the punk okay. thing was, was <laughs> like that. That was, that was a legit festival. The one I'm talking about was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like renownedly it was all weird, small, either like Detroit, Northern New York or Ontario or Quebec punk bands. And they played for two days at this guy's farm. And he was an old tattoo artist who was called Spider because he had tattooed his neck with a giant web. <laughs> and that's, that's classy. Yeah. And it was all like the real, like, if you went to it, it was every squeegee kid you'd see in every town <laughs> would gather <laughs> together. They would like take all their squeegee money and find a way to get up to this show. And it was, was just it, at a they, farm. Are they called, are they called squeegelos? Squeegelos, yeah. And they don't know how magnets work either. <laughs> just anyone. But it wasn't, there were no like commercial bands at this thing. This was like a lot of like the musicians around Ontario knew about it as like this weird inside joke because that's where all the kids played. And uh, so at that point, when I was, I, I guess I, I was still playing in a band at that point. And I had at one point called them and signed up for it. And Chris got really mad at it and then somehow conveniently broke his hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah that is convenient yeah and didn't it wasn't able to play it because he didn't want to play the show do you blame him though not really no it was just funny to see those posters popping up and see our band's name amongst the rest of the names because there were i always remember it was always fun to read the posters because some of the band's names like damn it jim and the disaster masters uh, <laughs> the uh, um razor uh, pissing razor blades I remember seeing them a lot on there. Broadzilla, I ended up like sort of meeting that band and discovering them and they were actually a lot of fun, but uh, but still the name was Broadzilla and that was fucking amazing. Well, 
It just means you're old. Yeah. Yeah. But the I'm not. That was no you know, the, the, that one year younger makes you immortal. <clears throat> I said I don't age. Yeah. I'm going, I, I'm Benjamin buttoning this shit. I'm going backwards. Benjamin buttoning it. <laughs> yeah. Can you still Benjamin button up your pants? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm fit as a motherfucker. <laughs> Good thing we're not using a webcam for this show. Huh? That's why you don't want to use a webcam. I'm not I'm even. I'm so. I'm so like normalized with how fucking fit I am. I don't even wear a shirt anymore. <laughs> I mean, I have true. a. I have a feeling a lot of people, post pandemic, have, have that same mentality though. Yeah, but except they're not as fucking fit as I am. Right. Not as not as buff. Buff Bagwell right that, here. It's fucking. It's it's fucking beefcake time here. <laughs> As in, like Cartman sitting on the couch shouting, "Beefcake!" Actually, well, I mean, if it's describing how fit I am, then yeah. All right. Actually, I think I now that we are going to get to the point of what we're talking about here, why we're having this show, I'm going to uh, to have to bring up a <laughs> a a picture for the background that will more make sense about what this point of this video was. We've been talking for like. 15 minutes but really we're here to talk new, about does this count as a new podcast is this a new podcast have we pod uh, podcasted a new has the pod uh, opened? Th this is just an audio yeah. special for riot at the movies well that sucks yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> wait till the people listen to it they'll then they'll know what i mean by that then they'll know how much it sucks <laughs> yeah. oh this come on this picture's got to come up somewhere um <clears throat> what valentine they anyway what we are here to talk about is the fucking royal rumble we've done this video several times in the past in our old podcast but um <laughs> uh the I really good the same ones you just said it was the same podcast it's a, it's just a special like uh, well this, it's no we used to do remember we used to do another podcast pi yeah yeah we don't well, do that anymore then we didn't yeah now it's just well, my because... youtube page so it's right at the movies so suck it uh, that's fine Social media is for, fools. For, for fools or ghouls fools oh, oh, there was a, a really really good slash bad photo of brutus the barber beefcake and greg the hammer valentine sitting watching tv together in their underwear <laughs> <laughs> that's basically us yeah. yeah and sadly i can't find it but i uh i can find one almost just as good which i think this will work well <laughs> i mean deep down i feel this this is probably still us and how we've aged as well <laughs> okay good looking forward, to <laughs> looking forward to seeing that yeah it's not as gross as the shirtless picture of the two of them with little they've got tv dinner trays in front of themselves as they sitting that's in too lazy awesome. and i feel like you think that's still a thing i guess maybe not so much tv dinner uh -huh. trays well, yeah, like you know, those that old like table set you used to get where you could, it was just like it folded out and it was on its own little thing, and you could put like trays on it to watch it in front of TV. It was like a TV, TV dinner, dinner table for one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That's, everybody's grandma had one. Yeah, absolutely. I have a I have a little wooden one that I usually use to, to put the computer on when I'm deciding I want to to record stuff in the living room but uh i'm actually not using that right now only purely by coincidence oh wow fuck you then <laughs> fuck you then buddy jeez yeah yeah all right where my access to the what i don't the... see this picture now Neither I. <laughs> <laughs> oh i guess it's gone then <laughs> uh, i just without using the um uh, the cameras i've i've like confused of where my options are where i have things to use in here all right let's see if we do new share and then we'll change it this will change the photo did that change the background for you yeah there we go yeah, <laughs> yeah. why is it got it makes it look like his <laughs> it's, he's got a bottle for a dick yeah <laughs> just gonna say it I'm just gonna put it out there why does <laughs> they look so bad i had a question and it's just like <laughs> yeah. fuck death has warmed over these men yeah yeah these, i should uh, wear tighter shirts that's what this shows me <laughs> that you should wear yeah I, I have you look like beefcake there you should not be wearing this this is more like, like no I, I i know we're in like a fat acceptance movement but i don't i don't accept i don't accept him. that i don't accept that in the movement i accept i accept fat acceptance except in this scenario 
I feel like they're also wearing those dark glasses because they don't have eyes anymore. They're just sort of yeah, melted. not that they're like they got high or drunk the last night before that they they're just the undead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they want you to think that they're like hungover rock stars, but they just don't have faces. They're just a hole where <laughs> their mouth would be, and that's about it. Yeah, Hammer they're, looks they're, like they're, fucking Pizza the Hut. They're fucking puppets, and it's just being held. Yeah, fucking Hammer looks like he he looks like he's dead. There's nothing there. <laughs> no. I mean, there. I bet you if you bet you if this was a high def pick, you could see strings holding up his hands. <laughs> <laughs> there's been like so many uh clips from this photos from like a series of interviews and it's amazing how they just talk in circles because they're both so fucked they have no idea where they are who they yeah. are anymore <laughs> anyway uh, that's what we're here to talk about shitty wrestlers and shitty wrestlers. wrestlers this is what we do um we've done before in the past our picks of what we think should be the royal rumble the royal rumble's coming up this sunday so we're going to get to the point if the second part of this audio special for you guys to listen to uh, a bob and adam reunion it's us bringing in <laughs> stupid stupid wrestlers into a far better royal rumble than i'm sure you're going to get the big thing this year is there's the is it this weekend is it this this, this sunday the saturday yeah it is the saturday it's not even sunday. yeah because i i kept saying sunday too but then i was corrected in the sense it's the network it's always saturday now yeah they've changed things because there's no because pay-per-view doesn't fucking need anything anymore no it doesn't fucking um disney just bought them for like a couple of countries they're now being on the like if you're in indonesia you can get it on the disney network so just imagine what the well, future is gonna be there this is bullshit. <clears throat> yeah, you have to get it just via their website here. But it, uh, why would I want to do that? Why would I? Why would I want to do that? Yeah, if I was going to do it off the website, I would just steal it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the problem with it is that it, not to get deep into it, but it's just like I, I don't want to watch all their content. No, so it seems weird to be buying a service that's only their content. The only reason that I debate getting it, and then usually I just find most of it on youtube or in like some old dvd somewhere is i every so often want to watch like really old rumbles or really old survivor yeah. series and they do have most of their stuff on there now um but it's still incomplete so it's not like you could find everything but and some of the well, stuff i want to watch is even older so and they don't give a fuck about it so neither do <laughs> i anyway going on from bitching about them as a person who does not pay attention to wrestling who is so old and out of place that them talking about the new Goldberg is this hook kid on AEW and I'm just like how is that the new Goldberg sure it might be working exactly the same and for the new generation and audience they might think that but I look at the at that kid and go I, I don't get it I, I just I'm sure that kid could I mean, beat me up he could beat me up 10 times around well, I get you know, I get hook as a wrestler I don't get like the new Goldberg thing if that's what they're calling him I don't know like I, I watch Funny enough, I, wa I watch AEW more because we have a Bell streamer and NTSN plays Dynamite. So I watch Dynamite and that's it because yeah. I get it for free. I get yeah. it with my internet fee anyways. And I mean, if there's going to be like a like a Goldberg, it's, I don't know, you know who Wardlow is? He's no. just like a big monster guy. Oh, and okay. he just comes out and he destroys people and his fucking, his finisher is the powerbomb symphony. So he's like a Brock Lesnar Goldberg. He doesn't lose. Yeah. He has a bunch of like power bombs to guys, to jobbers and like, like lower mid card guys. And then he leaves. But I mean, hook is just, I don't get that gimmick for him, but whatever. He's, he seems popular. I like his song. He's just rising really fast. He's undefeated. And they're like going to push him for like the championship in like, no he's time. undefeated in, in like four matches. <laughs> Probably. I mean, so that's not like great. Like I mean, yeah. four and zero is better than like one and three. But everybody's I mean, really fast to always compare. Like there's always like, okay, what is this gimmick you're now doing? Because we've gone through twenty years of just yeah. obvious repetitive gimmicks. Now we're just like expecting that. So we're like, okay, which gimmick is this? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you're you know you're really just looking for something that you've already seen. And if it's something that you've seen and like, you're like, I like this thing, even though you've probably seen it a thousand times before now. <laughs> Yeah, or at least it might have a chance because you've been disappointed so many other times. But I mean, NXT's got um, Walter now slash Gunther, and oh, yeah, uh, that's right, Gunther, <laughs> and uh, then it's got um, that uh, the other Steiners, not Scott Steiners, but the other Steiners' son, um, who's like kind of a, a big unstoppable super fit monster too. So what is that? 
I, I think was we're going to say Ben Steiner. <laughs> yeah, what the, what why the can't, ben, with ben the, Stein. the, 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 <laughs> Clear eyes. <laughs> the the dog face gremlin, whatever the hell his first name was. The dog face gremlin. Yeah, that's what the other Steiner was called. It was Scott Steiner and Rick. whatever Star, whatever Rick Steiner, the the Rick Steiner. dog face gremlin. <laughs> that was literally his fucking name. <laughs> that should be his. That should be his like official name. That should be on his like ID. Yeah, first name dog face, last name gremlin. Yeah, um, or like middle name faced. <laughs> first name dog <laughs> face yeah dog. middle name face like i know there's a hyphen for dog face but i mean fuck it it's my id first name t middle initial period last name <laughs> oh wait shit first name mr yeah. middle initial t, t period uh, mr period yeah, whatever <laughs> fuck letters i don't know anyway we're talking about he the rumble we're talking the first two contestants who are coming into our rumble <laughs> my first pick and you're gonna have some did people are gonna have to google did you this, shuffle this list up did you shuffle this list up is no, it random this or did is, you choose this like this is like man this is lording over <laughs> wrestling um more like um yes <laughs> <laughs> more like no example needed well we kind of discussed how this was gonna go down because we want certain things to appear in a certain way but the world doesn't know that and exp- and it's it's well, it does now shit because <laughs> i ain't gonna edit this so that's why with a, a spotlight hitting the entrance ring my first pick is coming to the ring you're gonna have to google some of these guys to figure out who the fuck we're talking about but the first one was man mountain rock <laughs> just a big fat old fucker at the time imagine can't imagine what he looks like now who is uh carried a big guitar that was shaped like the wwf symbol and he would play a couple of riffs there's always like a shitty guitar player guy who can't actually wrestle but looks like he should be a threat he'd fake playing guitar a couple of times and then someone would hit him from behind and then the match would just end there's always a guy like that but in the height of like bullshit i don't remember at all it, he barely ever wrestled. It was just this big buildup. Uh, I just, I just looked him up. Look at that fucking guitar. Yeah. <laughs> How is that not the cover? There's a there's a picture of him with the guitar in front of him. He's this big fat guy, and he's like got his hands out, like question, and his face is like, "What's going on?" That should be the cover of the WWF uh, album, you know, the <laughs> WWF music album. Yeah. Oh man, That's I got weird. a fucking vinyl of that that classic one. It's uh, it's a beautiful goddamn thing. <laughs> So, so, uh, so, as so as Man Mountain Rock slowly makes his badass to the ring, coming to the ring from the the far east, from the land of the rising sun, <laughs> is martial arts Asian, obviously Asian legend, <laughs> Lord Tensai. I picked Lord Tensai. <laughs> it's just so racist, <laughs> hilariously <laughs> racist. You can be mad, rightfully so, at all the racism in the world, but you can't be mad at Lord Tensai. The best part because is on his second match, they let him unmask. Like you weren't going to know who that fuck was. It's, that's Albert? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and now... I don't blame, I don't, you don't blame Albert for it, but it's just like, Jesus. <laughs> and the whole audience laughed when it happened. I always yeah. remember that moment. It's like, what, what'd you think was going to happen? Did you think they were going to go, oh, because <laughs> one, no one cared about <laughs> Albert to be like, oh, how amazing he's back. How do you think that conversation went in the back when they were trying to get a new gimmick for him after TNA broke up? And well, they were just like, you know what? Let's make him Japanese. <laughs> this I, I fucking feel- six foot, six foot six, six foot six wide <laughs> white man. Japanese. Now, not you only has it. piercings all over him, he now also has a tattoo on his face to look like Mike Tyson. That that is what they added to him. But I think to him, it may have made a little bit more sense because he had become a really big legend in Japan. And even after the Tensai thing, during the Tensai thing, and after the Tensai thing, he was a big trainer for a lot of people in New Japan. Well, that's true. I do know he was a trainer, but I mean. Just being being to pay in Japan doesn't make you Japanese. Right. But I feel like somewhere in his mind, because of how much the Japanese loved him, he figured that was okay. And it was you could imagine that moment when he unmasked and the audience laughed. It was like clicking in, going, Oh, wait, maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> Shit, this is bad. Yeah, yeah it wasn't like 
I, I feel like he walked in there for the first two masked matches thinking this was great. Um, yeah. I always remember. People love this. Um, do you remember? I want to call them the Chinese connection, but I don't think that's what they were called. The, the Oriental Express, I think. And the, or the Orient Express. They were the, after the, like the Midnight Express had been like a big thing and all like the Southern feds, the WWF around like 1990 had, um, a Mr. Fuji had a little tag team, one a long haired Asian guy, and then another guy who was a bit bigger who wore a mask, um, who was, I think, called Sato. But the reason for Sato wearing a mask was he was just a French Canadian guy <laughs> <laughs> who they were like going to give you a gimmick Sato. to, but they lost that guy's tag team partner. So they put him in with another match and thought, yeah, this won't last long, but it lasted for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> So are we allowed luckily, to say the word Orient anymore? Is that something we can say? I think we can say Orient. It's a place, but I don't know about the yeah, the rest of it. I, the the English always make that point when they say because they refer to what we th- say Asians, they say is Orientals because of but because they refer to Unless you're JR and then you just still call them Orientals because you're 80. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's to say Oriental as an American sounds weird because we never really said it that much. Yeah, that's but true. the English and would the always differentiate American. that. Yeah, well, we're to the rest of the world, we are sadly <laughs> as, as hosers. The world, what, what, what do they fucking know? Yeah, fuck the rest of the world. So, <laughs> they don't know nothing. my second wrestler coming into the ring as Lord First, before, before before wrestler number three comes in i'm going to point out the two first picks will probably not even be made it to the ring yet <laughs> it takes them that long like combined speed is like a minus i i think i i think man mountain rock has slowly gotten into the ring and tensai is just titty slapping him he's doing big loud <laughs> titty slaps because even with that tie-dye shirt on those big titties of of um man mountain rocks would probably slap pretty hard and i think that's all ten cyber <laughs> did he did like big chops because he was trying that was it, going to Asian, right is it, when you say something slaps hard now isn't that like that's cool <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that is oh man then did he slap that. hard <laughs> Yeah, that's what the kids mean today when they say yeah. them titty slap. <laughs> there we go. No more podcast. That's the best. It's not going to get better than that joke. <laughs> so, wrestler number three, Lothar from Defenders of the Earth. The character oh, that I <laughs> was the abstract 80s cartoon character which for the longest time and in many podcasts i've talked about 80s cartoons and brought up lothar because i always thought lothar was the 80s token character i thought he was it was a team of like classic serial characters mandrake the magician the phantom flash gordon and then this guy lothar nobody knew who that was uh, we figured oh they just wanted to make up a new character and figured okay we'll make a someone who's not white so we make up Lothar, but evidently Lothar existed back then. He was actually like oh. in those old comic books and, and stuff. I don't know if you ever had a serial. I think not as in the food, as in like those short movies. Yeah, yeah. But no, he I was... looked it up and uh, there's there's a bunch of like Defenders of the Earth, even the first one, Defenders of the Earth 1. You can see he's right there in the middle. Yeah, well, he was so always in the comic book Defenders of the Earth because Defenders of the Earth was an 80s thing. But like he is as old as Mandrake. Like the character oh, is like he was character. like pre Defenders of the Earth. Like <laughs> yeah, I thought they always made him up because the other three characters they obviously didn't make up. The other characters are all from the 50s. But I saw some old comic strips of like pre Defenders of the Earth that were he was there with Mandrake. So I think he was always like a partner for an adventurer or partner for Mandrake the Magician. But um so like actually that. not an 80s made up character. <clears throat> but regardless, he was very out of place he was just a big tough looking wrestler looking guy like who's a also a mountaineer roadblock yeah yeah. Like, yeah it looks like roadblock yeah and i believe that he could easily beat up both <laughs> lord tensai and <laughs> man mountain rock even being, even being fictional even yeah, being so fictional yeah uh, being fictional may have an advantage to him <laughs> i feel he hasn't aged <laughs> like the rest of them have I feel like though that that Lothar would like because he's supposed to be like a hero that he he he'd like throw them around a bit and give them a bit of a speech about I don't know justice. Well, Dave Justice. At least it's not Sid Justice, because then his leg would just fall off. <laughs> Shoot him to the sky. <laughs> but then after all these big men in the ring, it's time to even out the scales as 
wasn't the was he the mascot was he the manager of that tag team i don't really remember he's the only guy we remember out of that tag team it's <laughs> el torito el Tor- i even had to ask you when i was making this list that's what his name was right <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I remembered Los Matadores, but I mean, I don't remember who they were, and I just remember who was that little bull guy. And you're like, hey, <laughs> it's Rito. Yeah. I saw a little clip of like, um, I think it was Bo, what's Bo Dallas? Bo Dallas, yeah, fighting El Torito one on one, and it was this video clip of like the weirdest things shouted out from the audience, and there's a moment of like silence as like. Uh, Bo Dallas gets on his knees and he says, go on, get a free shot in my face. And Del Torito starts to like rev up like a cartoon character. And in this yeah. moment of quiet in the audience, one guy shouts out, go back to hell, you little shit demon. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, is he talking about Bo Dallas or El Torito? <laughs> Definitely talking about Bo Dallas. <laughs> uh, oh, Dallas poor Jesus. Bo Dallas. That, that doesn't feel like that long ago. No, but it probably was. Yeah, like probably like five yeah, years. I feel like El Torito was like, fuck, was that stupid though? He had better matches than I feel that the Los um, Luchadores guys or whatever they're. That yeah, well, I think they were in the Los Matadores. They're supposed to be Matadores, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I think just... that's why he was a little bull because they yeah. were Matadores, <laughs> right? And I guess so they they murder him all the time because you know what happens <laughs> in bullfights that if they win the bullfighter stabs, so they just like they just stab oh we're gonna murder him. <laughs> So he comes to the ring and um, Lord Tensai just stabs him with a samurai sword, <laughs> picks him up and throws him out of the ring. First eliminated is El Torito. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> and then Lord Tensai and Lothar, because they feel there's some sort of connection in their name, both grab onto <laughs> big fat legs of Man Mountain Rock and then they put him on the ropes the Lord Tansai grabs his, the guitar from Man Mountain Rock and smacks him in his fat ass and he falls over the ropes. Do they keep now, the guitar? Yeah, Lord Tansai gets to keep the guitar now. <laughs> Gonna need it. <laughs> and he, as, so as Lord Tensai uh, plays some mad licks, <laughs> some, he slaps hard on that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Lothar Everybody waits to see who's coming to the ring next. And it's everyone's favorite giant purple monster. No, it's not Barney. It's the Grimace. The Grimace. <laughs> have we used the Grimace before? I feel we have, but I feel he's a he's an all time legend in <laughs> fictional battle royales. So coming it's to the ring royals, yeah. filled with hate and filled with hunger. <clears throat> but not not only is this the Grimace. This time it's the 1970s Grimace. He has four arms now, and he's evil. What does the seventies Grimace have four arms? Yeah, <laughs> he can no steal way. all the milkshakes. Is that? I still don't think he was a fucking milkshake. Well, he would steal the milkshakes. I don't. Th- I think he was well, a. Why? Yeah. Why would he steal the milkshakes? Oh shit, he did have four arms. <clears throat> Although this picture makes it look like he's got. They're they're like peanuts. It looks like he has like four sets of boobs. Yeah, he was like he had like his his titties were laughing hard. <laughs> <laughs> i typed in grimace forearms and the fifth picture is a is the forearm grimace fighting goro from mortal Kombat. <laughs> see i told you this this character doesn't fuck around <clears throat> right now he is pounding the shit out of both lord tensai and lothar luckily the next wrestler is on their way <laughs> the countdown happens <laughs> and it's the man who will ponder the weather ponder the reality of this whole match it's Werner Herzog <laughs> who now I mean, due, art, due to NXT they've changed his name to Gunther Herzog <laughs> he's just this is just a documentary to him <laughs> so is he going to like film the match is he, he's not in the ring yet he's just walking around the match filming it I, you, I picked him as an art house pick because I feel like you know how he's in he's in the first season of the Mandalorian and yeah. there was a like a side thing where they were talking about uh the baby Yoda who had just called the child at that time and and I'm Werner Herzog is child. like they, they asked him what he thought about the child he's like he like looks directly at the camera and he's like the child is beautiful <laughs> and that moment lives with me 
<laughs> and that's what I feel like when he goes out to the ring, he looks up at completely Japanese Lord Tensai and says, <laughs> Lord Tensai is beautiful. He's just filming Lord Tensai playing Man Mountain Rock's guitar. <laughs> that's right. Now that's some, that's some documentary footage people are going to fucking buy. And Lothar respects that. So Lothar's not taking a shot at him. He's just letting it out. <laughs> but it's because Lothar's too busy getting the crap pounded out of him by the grimace. Lothar is thrown over the ropes. But luckily, Lothar always carries ropes with him because he's a mountain climber. So he hangs on and he pulls himself back in. Was that Lothar's thing? Was he like he a mountain climber? Mountain? Yeah. That's it? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, in the adventure days, I guess that was a big thing. Like, because, you know, I was watching some Alan Quartermain yesterday. And, you know, what was he really brought to the show other than he traveled a lot? <laughs> what, the Richard in, Chamberlain movies? Yeah. <laughs> Which one? The one with Elvira or the other one? Uh, last night I was watching the, the first one, the King Solomon Mines one. King Solomon's Mines, yeah. yeah the the um, City of Gold is the Elvira one. The movie where yeah. they don't let Elvira talk. It's so no. weird. And she's not in like makeup or anything, and she's known as Cassandra Peterson, like that's her name. Yeah, we all know different. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I know, is, I know this is going out of topic, but I think you're wrong. I think Alan Quartermain does bring something to the table that Lothar doesn't. He brings <laughs> he brings colonial racism. Yeah, I was gonna say he would have said something terribly untasteful to Lothar. <laughs> so I think <clears throat> Lothar's as American as anything. <laughs> Isn't Richard Chamberlain's English, isn't he? Was he? Is yeah. wasn't he? Or he yeah, was putting that on. Yeah, there was a, a great bit in in when we're watching Alan the uh, King Solomon's Mine, where he asked Sharon Stone, the, the the girl in trouble all the time for him, and says, "What do you do anyway?" And she says, "Oh, I I study archaeology. You know, study archaeology. Who would have time to do something like that?" <laughs> <laughs> it was like, wow. I wonder how many people caught that joke right away. Be like, yeah, What's I'm a, the thing that came that a joke about. Isn't that a joke about? Like, isn't it Sharon Stone in Raiders of the Lost Ark? No. Who's written Raiders of the Lost Ark? The girl who comes back in the terrible last Indiana Jones. Oh, Raiders, one? no, Temple of Doom. Sorry. So, yeah, the one in Temple of Doom isn't her either, but that's what they're going for. Because the woman in Temple of Doom didn't do a whole lot because she married Steven Spielberg right after making that's that right. movie. Yeah. And became, you know, his. I gotta watch my classic movies again, or other people's idea of classic <laughs> movies again. Other people's ideas, yeah. I'm a big fan of Temple of Doom. I it's it. I think Temple of Doom is one of my favorites because it's actually kind of the hokiest. It's really well, like, yeah. I mean, but... like when you come to Indiana Jones, when I was a kid, I loved Temple of Doom, and I mean, I haven't seen it for years, so it's probably still gonna be my favorite because it, it's goofy. And I always wanted. Oh, okay. I know this is about the Royal Rumble, but fuck it. So you know what I always wanted to do. And since uh, you use the, you know, internet and uh, you have people like, you know, listen to you and shit, maybe someone will do this for me. But, you know, there's a, uh, you know, the song Cotton Eye Joe? Yes. Yeah. So, where you know, the from? part in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom where they're climbing up the thing at the end and uh, the guy's doing the Kali Ma speech while he's trying to, like, rip Indiana Jones's heart out while they're holding on to the ropes. Right. I want to take that the thing where he's doing that, like, that Kali Ma chant and I want to put it to Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> to Kali Ma Joe? Yeah, I just, that, that's what I want. And <laughs> it right, hasn't well. happened yet, so <clears throat> the internet has failed me. Well, failed. You failed as an internet. Just give it time, man. It'll happen. Well, I'm putting it out there now because I've never yeah. spoken aloud. <laughs> that's like how the internet works. Kind of like, like when you say like, Shazam, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah Beetlejuice happens. shows up. <laughs> say Shazam and Beetlejuice shows up. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to go into the bathroom, say Candyman five times. You say Beetlejuice three times. Let's make them fight. Why do you listen to the bathroom for Candyman? Does the Candyman only show up in bathroom mirrors? No. Well, yeah, it seems like it. That well, seems a little weird. Candyman died while taking his shit. He died Elvis style. <laughs> so that's the only way to bring him back. <laughs> so the countdown's happening. It's another classic wrestler from the Man Mountain Rock era. It's too bad that El Torito's already gone because here comes Mantar. <laughs> How is that not a thing? They should bring Mantar back. Not like the guy who was Mantar, but the character. The character, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of uh, interviews with like guys from that era, from the pre attitude era, and they're always being asked, So, what do you, do you have anything to say about Mantar? And everyone's like, 
I don't remember him. I feel like he didn't really happen. Like no one knows who he was. What's that, what's that thing with like the Bernstein Bears? Uh, yeah, yeah, that the thing Mantar Bears. Like everybody, every everything from is everything you like. You remember something to be true, but it's actually wrong. What is it? The something effect. The Nelson Mandela effect. <laughs> the, the Mandela effect. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's the Mantar thing. People all think Mantar exists, but he did. He wasn't <laughs> real. It didn't happen. Yeah, it was just yeah. a story made up by Sinbad while pretending to be a genie. <laughs> Uh, Kazam. You say that, Beetlejuice shows up too. (laughs) It's weird, huh? So Mantar's running around with his horns. People think maybe that when El Torito went back behind the curtains after he lost, he took some growth serum and came back as Mantar. He's the Captain America of Minotaur men. He's now, uh, while Lothar is being held down by all four arms of the Grimace, uh, Mantar has now smashed his head into the guitar by that Man Round Rock had left behind that Lord Tensai was using, which caused Lord Tensai to fall out of the ring and made oh, no. Werner Herzog start to cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now this is excitement, folks. This is excitement. Because- what else are you going to see? A, a totally Japanese guy in Lord Tensai fall on Werner Herzog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He felt like this was Harikari happening right in front of his eyes. But in fact, it was Harry Carey happening right in front of his <laughs> eyes. The, the, the undead. <laughs> that's, that's who one of the announcers Fortnite. is for the show. It's the ghost of Harry Carey. <clears throat> with, with two referees at either side of the ring, Johnny Anaconda from Dinosaurs in the Mining Facility and Justin DeClue is the other referee on the other side. <laughs> the countdown's like- happening again, though. There's another wrestler coming. Oh no. <laughs> it counts down and the theme song to the Wizard of Oz happens as Kevin <laughs> Nash comes out dressed as Oz, his classic, oh, yeah. classic WCW character. He's so green. <laughs> He's so green and so shiny and wears a mask of another face. Because <laughs> that's what the Wizard of Oz did. He wore <laughs> other people's masks. <laughs> Other people's faces. Hey. Wizard of Oz slash Leatherface. <laughs> That's what happens after the Wizard of Oz ends. <laughs> he murders people and puts on their face. Werner Herzog is so amazed of this. He's just filming the giant green tower of a man. As Lothar breaks free and he has a big elbow to the back of Werner Herzog's head, sending Werner Herzog out of the ring, which then shocks everyone because with centrifugal force, Luthar leans on the ropes, this time not leaving his, his mountain climbing ropes behind. He gets grabbed by both the Grimace and Oz and thrown out of the ring. Oh. It's crazy. The only people in the ring right now are Oz, Mantar, <laughs> and the Grimace. <laughs> <laughs> so then the countdown Seems happens, so and who comes out? But it's Kevin Nash again, but this time dressed as the Russian from the movie The Punisher. It's a variant. It's a Kevin Nash variant, people. The multiverse is real. It's happening. This is Royal Rumble No Way Home, everyone. (laughs) We've already used the Super Shredder in past, so he's not coming. Don't worry. (laughs) The Russian and Oz battling face to face. I totally forgot about him him being the Russian. (laughs) One of those only really good part in that whole fucking movie, actually, shockingly enough. That scene's actually just done better than the rest of the movie. I don't, I like, I barely remember anything from that Punisher. When I think sometimes of the, like, the end of it with um, John Travolta being the villain, I'm just yeah. accidentally thinking of Swordfish. <laughs> it's just yeah. like he's like the same <laughs> character in both those movies. Oh, Swordfish. Which are two probably the most forgettable John Travolta roles ever. And they're the same role. <laughs> I have to agree with you because I forgot John Travolta was in Swordfish. In both, he has like a little bad, like Chris Gaines little goatee, like a little like like a, 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 a flavor, like a flavor saver one, like not like a not like a Shaggy <laughs> or a me goatee, but like just like the little under the lip thing. <clears throat> I'm gonna look it up. I'm looking it up right now. Look at that. That oh man, that's rough. That little, <laughs> that little, that little patch of hair there. That's rough. <laughs> that's rough. 
Oh yeah. Oh, that's the movie people remember because Halle Booby, Halle Berry shows her boobs. Halle Booby. <laughs> Halle Booby. Yeah, exactly. And then right afterwards, she said, like in a public interview, she would never like do nudity if it didn't have a reason for it. Oh and yeah, it's, like the oh, most. Shit, I, remember, I think we watched that movie together because I remember you know, we knew that interview, and the scene is literally like Hugh Jackman is there. And she's like stunning and she just puts the sun thing down and her boobs are out. And you're like, yeah, that that was really necessary. <laughs> and then she, they turn around and she's covered again, like as if like, yeah. it was just like a mistake or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I feel like I feel like someone was coerced into that. <laughs> or she's just a hypocrite. I mean, that's very possible, too. <laughs> so. The counting down is movie. happening. That's so funny. I don't care. About it. <laughs> and that you didn't mean to do it makes it extra. Fun. I didn't mean to, but it was just because <laughs> you were thinking when I was looking at you. Weirdly enough, if you look up John Travolta swordfish images, you get a bunch of images of him with that stupid little thing from Swordfish, and then uh, a cover of Swordfish, and it says the the movie Halle Berry shows her boobs. <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure she does as well in monsters ball but i mean i guess that was more relevant to the plot probably yeah i mean that movie that, that, i don't think we should talk about those two movies together I mean, no <laughs> no no not at all we should move on because the rumble's still happening <laughs> there's two kevin nashes fighting each other luckily one of them is wearing an old man wizard mask so it might oh. not be him we don't know <laughs> but it could be the other one's just wearing a striped shirt yeah <laughs> and he's got really super blonde hair as the grimace is holding on to mantar with all four of his arms <laughs> and then comes out seven your oh, pick seven. my pick because the, they decided to make dustin rhodes a child murdering vampire <laughs> If it wasn't creepy enough that he was gold dust, they're like, oh, but it's too, it's too sexual to be gold dust. So let's make him a vampire that stalks children in the night. Children. <laughs> he stands outside their windows at night yeah. with like, like a, a Michael Myers like style mask. Like it's just the blank white. Yeah. <laughs> and he just stares at children through their windows. He, he floats out their window like it's. Um... How is that a gimmick? <laughs> there are moments in wrestling gimmicks where you need to say like well, how is that a gimmick what is like is was the plan that at some point he was going to kidnap another wrestler's child and then they had to fight him and beat him like dracula style before he murdered a child is that was that it i mean there's been weirder shit i mean there's been lots of times that wrestlers have kidnapped the other wrestler's kid and they've had to like fight for it but well, luckily guess, in their I mean, case it didn't happen because he did that like promo two or three times he came out to the ring as seven like once and then he, he he wasn't wearing a mask he just had really really thick white paint on his face and he threw yeah. the hat down and he said this oh, is yeah, terrible. He, like great character and was like look at this shit they're making me do yeah, he's like, I thought that Goldust was bad enough. It's bad, which a lot of people think that was the whole gimmick. The whole gimmick was you were supposed to think, oh my God, you made him worse than Goldust, than Goldust and that his breaking character was to show because this was that was at the dawn of the Attitude Era in WWF, and it was when WCW was really getting into the NW. It was about to really get into the NWO thing, and so they wow. were. Getting yeah, I don't know, Adam. I feel like you're you're giving you're giving wrestling writers a lot of fucking crap. Yeah, I know. I and, and this is where I'm gonna say where I doubt it. I think it was just shit. He fought as as Dustin Rhodes two or three times, fought stunning Steve Austin, and then both him and Austin went back to WWF. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was just a shit time. I think that's what it was. But a lot of like hardcore fans like to like deeply read into that. But I'm pretty sure it was just shit. It was just shit. And you know what? When you said about like mm. wrestling has worse things, let's do the kid. You're right. We 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 live through the era of fucking Snitsky hitting Kane into Lita's baby and killing it. <laughs> to when <clears throat> Al Snow <laughs> cooked Big Boss Man's dog and fed it to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> like, they're worse than that. You're right. <laughs> when Big Show's dad died. So the big boss man then hooked his oh, car yeah. up to his coffin <laughs> and drove it away as Big that's Show a... grabbed on the coffin and rode it down the street. That's why when you when you tell these 
stories in a row. That's why if you're a wrestling fan, you need to get over your fucking self. <laughs> because I mean, wrestling is stupid. It's yeah. amazing and I love it. And I'll, I'll always watch it in some way or another. But mm. go fuck yourself. Wrestling is retarded. Oh, wait, so I'm much not supposed so. to use that word anymore. <laughs> but, but in this case, it is. So much so that when Dustin Rhodes gets to the ring, he takes his hat off and says, look at this bullshit. They're making me be seven again. And he puts himself <laughs> over the ropes and leaves. That's, a, that's super appropriate. <clears throat> then the Grimace picks up Mantar, throws him over the ropes. It's now two Kevin Nashes and a Grimace in the ring. That's all we've got. <laughs> Whatever happened to Grimace's other arms? <laughs> he ate them. <laughs> the Grim- he's called the Grimace because that that's the feeling and the, the face you make after you eat at McDonald's, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I'm saying that straight out. Like that, that that's what it's supposed to be. That's why they call them the Grimace, right? That's why if you eat too many of them, you eat too much, you, that you start to get the Grimace. I'm surprised they never made a single like like popsicle or like milkshake or just something that was called the grimace just to like i mean i just i'm still i'm still baffled by the whole grimace thing <laughs> that's why he's in this ring to baffle us <laughs> to baffle. as the the numbers count down and out from the ring comes my chance to throw in an advertisement for terrible two-day fest number five <laughs> happening at the end of march <laughs> this year it's granny gore terror it's an old lady that ate some weird strawberries she found in her basement that were 100 years old it turned her into a mutant granny with a drill <laughs> so she's come to the ring with her rubber gloves and a drill and she's chasing both kevin nashes around the ring <laughs> it's too bad her dog is still in there <laughs> yeah Herzog's now sitting in the audience filming saying this is beautiful this is beautiful the, 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 it the will be 16 degrees tonight wrestling <laughs> <laughs> and then another wrestler comes to the ring it might just be El Torito outside of costume because Mantar has left so maybe he shrunk back down and took the costume off but it's everyone's favorite double O agent. It's Wang Wang. Yeah. Had to use Wang Wang. I feel like Wang Wang outclasses who's left in the ring right now. Wang Wang flipped up the ropes to get in there. Wang Wang has now spun and flipped up both Kevin Nash's. <laughs> <laughs> but he should have rode the tiny motorcycle in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did, but then he like hit it on a brake real fast. He flipped off of it right into the ring. But yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> It now takes all four arms of the Grimace to hold on to Wang Wang to stop Wang Wang from flipping around like would, a crazy ninja. I would pay, like like my Kalima Cotton Eye Joe thing, I would pay someone to make a movie where Wang Wang fights the Grimace. The Grimace tries to eat Wang Wang, but Wang Wang uses his kung fu powers to punch out of the stomach of the Grimace, <laughs> letting both Kevin Nash's pick up the now deflating carcass, discovering there was never a person inside there. <laughs> <laughs> and they throw it outside of the ring and it just flops on the ground now it, the ring is just granny gore terror from the movie granny gore terror or swabian <laughs> granny gore terror and wang wang from such great movies as impossible kid <laughs> the wild wild wang <laughs> and for your height only and two kevin nashes <laughs> but <laughs> both kevin nashes have a knee that blows out at the same time <laughs> and they fall down <laughs> Letting Granny Terror and Wang Wang do super uppercuts that make them fall out of the ring because they were so tall they had to lean on the top ring to balance themselves. But with both a blown out knee, they couldn't support themselves. Both Kevin Nash's fall out of the ring. Oz's mask yeah. falls off and he had no face underneath it. <laughs> Warner Herzog stands up from the audience and says, This is beautiful. <laughs> Now, the only two people in the ring is Granny Gore Terror chasing little Wang Wang around <laughs> with a hand drill. Yeah, this seems like real. This is reality <laughs> to me. The numbers start counting. And another, I'm, I'm just picking from that same era, man, 1993 to 94 mm-hmm. had a real big effect on me because here comes Bastion Booger. I know oh, I've used Bastion. him before, but he's needed. He's a big fat guy who ate chicken on the way to the ring and was dressed solely in duct tape. I feel like, he, I don't know. I feel like big fat people have influenced your life a lot, Adam. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, Didn't he like uh, used to eat like like gross amounts of food too? Yeah, yeah. 
to just to be like as gross as possible. There's a great how um Thanksgiving episode where I guess it was probably a Survivor series. So that's usually around then cuz he's on a tag team with like the head shrinkers and, <laughs> and they bring out all these like full turkeys and they're like eating them on the side of the ring to look like they're savages so then he just starts eating them too and then they hand him a bunch of bananas and he feels the bananas and then just pushes them into his mouth (laughs) so he's just like wearing banana and turkey all over himself that wasn't the that but that wasn't like that white guy just wasn't bastion booger didn't he have like another another gimmick that was really stupid too or all Uh, of them before that he was a he was a monk his character was like Friar. Oh shit! Yeah, he was that Friar guy. He was yeah. like a Robin Hood friar. Who also friar. carried chicken to the ring and ate a big leg of chicken all the time. <laughs> did, so did, like, he, did he really? Yeah, because that's what Friar Tuck did. And so, so it they was, were just like, "We want you to be just like your Friar gimmick, but with less clothes." Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> because Bastion Burger was just like a, like a, like a gray, like pair of panties with like duct tape suspenders yeah yeah that was like wrapped around his legs and his his shoulders yeah genius <laughs> it was like the pre-version to midian if you remember when midian went from being uh one of the the godwins but he was like and he was they were done with him but he was really good friends with undertaker so he's like you okay then sure you can do something okay your gimmick now is that you're a goss guy who likes to get naked and so in the middle of matches oh, you'll right. take your clothes off and just have a little like pouch around your balls and you'll run after people going oh wrestle me now and then your opponents will leave and get counted out and that's how you'll win and then one day on a thanksgiving special you will leave with a turkey possibly have alluded to fucking the turkey bring it back and put it in the table and then everyone will have a food fight and certain people will be eating that turkey and you will be laughing in the corner that's what midian did (laughs) you know you really put down what we've been talking about with the character to add in I think Werner Herzog would actually film this. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've written it too. <laughs> uh, yes, if you don't believe me, it is definitely alluded to because he leaves with the turkey before the food fight, but he brings it back while smoking and says, thanks, baby. <laughs> and puts it on the table. <laughs> you know, and although the ills of the world that go on now, why does no one talk about that? <laughs> Yeah, why does, why does no one talk about Midian? Midian really affected mentally a lot of children in the 90s. <laughs> and not man, a good the way. Man, the man fucked a turkey. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Uh, and all I can think of is the end of Christmas story. No turkey dinner, no turkey sandwiches. <laughs> the old that, man is furious. Are you telling me are you telling me that before the Christmas dinner and Christmas story that Midian fucked a turkey? <laughs> I think all those dogs ran in and knocked it over and ate it. No, it was because Midian came into their house. That's what they told the kids. It was was dogs. (laughs) They knocked it over. It definitely wasn't a fat pervert fucking it. That made us throw it out. (laughs) Oh, Midian, you ruined Christmas again. You'll never be able, no one, well, no one will listen, but no one who does listen will ever be able to watch that movie again without thinking. Hey, that's that movie those two weirdos talked about that guy fucking the turkey in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe that'll happen in Christmas Story 2. Oh, there was a Christmas Story 2. But... Yeah, there was one, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Yeah. Ah, moving on. Coming to the ring. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, <laughs> you, you picked the, the most unrelevant well, yet most relevant wrestler he's the most recent the only active wrestler on our list i think it's oh yeah it's hollywood's own the miz yes where <clears throat> i remember the story about this pick is i remember telling you you being mad that i picked the Miz, <laughs> and i said i'm saying to you it works because everybody hates the Miz. <laughs> he's the perfect villain for this type of rumble because he's ridiculously like reality based and he's just gonna like relax in the corner he's gonna watch what's happening um i i think all we've got is bastion booger sitting in the other corner eating a turkey as uh wang wang and a little old lady zombie fight each other in the middle of the ring so i'm just gonna put this out there and it might go too far but i feel like maybe bastion booger might be seeing turkey in the mist 
<laughs> he wants to eat. You know, you, I know you know where I'm going with that. I'm just saying. <laughs> but Fashion Booker never really... fucked a turkey. It was only Midian. I'm just saying they were friends. <laughs> Are you saying that Fashion Booker might want to fuck Miz? I don't understand. Yes. Yes. So well, I said as Bastion Booger fucks Miz in the corner. Your, this is your sh- your show. So I said it subtly in case you weren't you didn't think it was appropriate for the Miz to be fucked by Bastion Booger. So as that's happening in one corner, Wang Wang gets the hand drill from Granny Gore Terror, this is a very drills her in the head rumble. and throws her out of the ring. So so there are two actual WWF wrestlers. Fucking in the corner as Wang Wang looks on very confused. And Verna Herzog says, Beautiful. <laughs> uh, sitting with at, now at the commentary booth with the ghost of Harry Carey. As a referee, Justin DeClue looks on having no purpose in this match since it's no rules for this match. He's just there in case someone needs him. <laughs> but then the most illegal wrestler of that time period, again, from that same time period as Man Mountain Rock, Bastion Booger, Mantar, it's Nails. The guy who I was never sure if they were dubbing over his voice or not. Because he talked like this. I don't remember Nails. Nails was I mean, the the ex convict. Yes, it was with a Z. He was the ex convict. Oh, yeah, I remember. Fight yeah. Boss yeah. Man. <clears throat> but then I yeah. believe somewhere along the lines, he punched, like, he for real punched an official. I think, I think maybe he got in like a physical altercation with like, um, Gorilla Monsoon or something. And so therefore they're like, okay, yeah, you're, you're out. But he was like, oh, I just thought that was me pushing the character. <laughs> And they're like, actually, you gotta fucking warn us about that. He actually does look like he could have been a criminal. And I don't just mean because they dress him like a criminal, but I mean like <laughs> nothing against it, dude. This really stood yeah. out for me because this is probably about 1992, and it's like first kind of really discovered wrestling, and that happened, and I was like, I can't believe it. An ex-cop who's in that wrestling fed is being threatened by a guy he once arrested. Who didn't bother to get changed since he left jail? <laughs> and for a fleeting moment as a child, I was like, that should be illegal. They shouldn't let this happen. <laughs> and- I mean, child, child right was correct. <laughs> child right is, I'm telling you right now, child right is a great name for a fucking band. <laughs> for like an 80s hair metal band You're or a, a, metal. a Japanese band. A Japanese 80s hair metal band with Lord Tensai. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent Japanese person. <laughs> All born and bred and pretending to be Japanese. <laughs> he was born on bread while pretending to be Japanese. <laughs> uh, um, so, this, uh, there's too much, there's too much food in this Royal Rumble. It's like a food fight. And also there's a there's a, there's a lot more sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> not for wrestling on a whole because wrestling is ripe with it but i mean <laughs> for what we normally do for for live in the ring <laughs> for, li- for live in the ring wrestling well there's a re- lot more there's a hundred percent more sexual assault well referee justin the clue is going stop it bastion booger stop it leave miz alone nails comes <laughs> in and punches out referee justin the clue which causes him to be disqualified. So Nails is his career is just as short as his regular career. He's out of the <laughs> rumble. <clears throat> it's back to just being Wang, Bastion Booger, and Bastion Booger's Wang and the <laughs> Oh, we're children. But then everyone's hero <laughs> for all the children comes down to the ring. He's a legend for all American red-blooded apple pie children of the 80s and 90s. He's definitely dead, but so are most of these wrestlers. <laughs> it's Jim Varney. Yeah. Well, they made it sound like he was going to be a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the hype, Bob. It's all about the like hype. maybe Jim Varney had, like, because he did a bunch of, like, <clears throat> things where he, like, split his personality, right? He had a bunch of different personality characters. Yeah, well, Did, he's going to come to the ring wrestler? via Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. He's now dressed as that old lady that had a neck 
brace for some reason. Oh, yeah, why weird. did you have a neck brace? <laughs> so, so he comes to the ring already with his neck brace on. <laughs> he's ready to fight. He's swinging. He's got the handbag of that old lady, and he is hitting the crap out of Wang Wang, <laughs> and then also hitting the crap out of Miz while Miz is still being fucked by Matt Jim Barney. <laughs> Jim Barney puts Wang Wang in the handbag, spins it around, and throws it out of the ring. Well, Wang Wang is, no. just, is out of the ring. It's now just Jim Varney and Bastion Booger. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is getting worse than Ernest Goes to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely Ernest Goes to Hell. Ernest Goes to Hell. But don't worry, everything's going to get straightened out real fast because coming to the ring is the eliminator for the 80s team, the Thundercats. It's Panthro with both his red and blue nunchucks. They're swinging. He's in the ring. He's he's talking jive. He's voiced by the guy who played <laughs> Bill Cosby's a lot dad. Of jive. <laughs> he's wondering, where's the Samoflange? He doesn't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't need the Sam Flash to kick your ass. <laughs> He's kicking Jim Barney in the gut while hitting both Bastion Booger and the Miz on the head with his nunchucks, which causes a gushing of blood to come out of Bastion Booger's head and fall backwards. And finally, he leaves the Miz alone. <laughs> <laughs> Miz Some people says, might be offended by this. <laughs> and too bad. The Miz <laughs> turns to Panthro and says, Thank you, but then gets hit in the head by one of those dumb chucks. <laughs> oh, the Miz. <laughs> uh, the Miz is, is just is just in conf- confused. He wasn't meant for this. This isn't <laughs> this isn't what, what the fuck was that series of movies that he did that he took over John Cena? Oh, the Marine. Marine, yeah, right. This is the, the Marine Part 7. The Miz Marine. Uh, Didn't uh, Teddy Hart Jr. do the like the second one? Uh, not Teddy Hart Jr., but Ted DiBiase Jr. Ted DiBiase Jr. I got one of the someone's yeah. stupid kid that was a, a dickhead. <laughs> well, Teddy Hart's a renowned second gen wrestler, and he's but no one likes him, so there's no way they would put him in a movie. Yeah, but I thought that that was with uh DiBiase's kid too. A uh, DiBiase's kid just decided he was very depressed and he quit wrestling. He was part of that. I mean, he was in the, he was in the, the Marine movie. I would have quit too. Yeah, but at the time they gave him the Marine movie, he was part of that like um stable of second gen guys that was um randy orton teddy biasa jr and cody rhodes and cody and randy are like the biggest things in the world so uh, ted just chose to not do it god damn it ted i have a feeling ted does also doesn't like his dad and his dad seems like a kind of dad to not like so <laughs> i feel <laughs> someone's dad was ever unlikable it was ted db <laughs> yeah ah classy so that yeah that describes this rumble but then everyone looked up as the the thunderdome that this match is happening in opens up is the only way that this contestant can come to the ring <laughs> they look up into the sky and the new contestant comes in and says hello i'm the moon <laughs> <laughs> this is a you choice bob yeah you i know it's the, a good the, choice <laughs> the one known sometimes as the vanilla rapist <laughs> it's the moon from the mighty boosh i told you there are more there's more references and actual sexual assault of this <laughs> and in real wrestling he lands into the wow. ring and both jim varney the miz bastion booger are bounced out of the ring and land outside now the only person left in the ring is the moon <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and Panthro. Panthro hangs on to the ropes with his cat-like skills. Well, yeah, that makes sense. But he can't do anything. Panthro is so tough, he could just roll the moon out. The moon goes over the ropes, crushes half <laughs> the audience and kills them, but is eliminated. The only person in the ring is Panthro from the Thundercats. <clears throat> what, num- what number are we at? You're now, not counting, are you? Each hitting up. We're, we've both got 10 wrestlers in there now. So oh, We're in the final 10. Yeah, so we coming out, and just then the numbers go out, and a hero almost as legendary as some of the people we've had in this ring <laughs> comes to it. It's the Rocketeer. He blasts right into the ring. He touches the ring. He bounces off the rope and blasts back out of the ring, <laughs> lands outside, <laughs> and crashes into the moon. <laughs> and the Rocketeer has eliminated himself. It's still just Panthro. No one beats Panthro. <laughs> that seems appropriate for the Rocketeer. <laughs> but 
no one was ready for this because slithering up the side of the ring it had made its way in through the pipes from underneath it's not jake the snake it's not damien it's not his snake no it's the cocaine cancer snake from hard ticket to hawaii <laughs> it comes yeah, up out of the ring care. and it jumps out and it bites panthro in the face <laughs> oh he's got he's got cocaine cancer poison <laughs> radioactive cocaine cancer poison no <laughs> that's the deadliest snake of all time <clears throat> yep <laughs> yep <laughs> and coming to the ring it's <laughs> so his pants are dead no I he's mean, just they can't throw him out he's just all fucked up <laughs> <laughs> fighting around with the snake on his face whipping it around trying to like use his nunchucks but knocking himself in the face as the kingpin played by D'Onofrio comes out wearing his Hawaiian shirt picks up Panthro with the snake stuck to his face throws him out of the ring it's now just D'Onofrio it's now just the kingpin he got shot in the face but we know he's still alive spoiler yeah, if you haven't seen I mean... the end of Hawkeye no, I have seen the end of Hawkeye, but I mean, you might be talking to other people. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, other people. <laughs> uh, but then the Undertaker's music starts. The smoke comes around the arena. The lights hit the front. It's the ghost of Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> this was this a you choice, me. Bob. Don't blame me. This for this me. Yeah, yeah. People can blame me. There, I mean, there's some there's some historical accuracy to the choice of someone that is beloved that has recently died that we we put into something that is what most people consider disrespectfully a joke uh, but we can that's, say a thing. that's a thing that we do and they might not know this but there's always there's always someone you like who's died that <laughs> we made a joke about too soon for you because when so we get over it is what i'm trying to say because <laughs> when one of us says too soon the other one says nope nope <laughs> that's not, the last one uh, I don't remember the last one, but I remember when Eddie Guerrero died because it's relevant <laughs> to wrestling. And I remember that there was a joke made within hours of it. And so, that it we like made, like, soon, I think you know? maybe on the air, on radio. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, nope, not too soon. The point is, it's it's easier with Betty White, too, because, I mean, she'd get the joke. She'd yeah. Get right she was so much good. so that she's more powerful than ever now. She's Betty White the White now. Riding a horse. To the... <laughs> she says to pe she says to the kingpin, "A Betty White doesn't show up late to battle. It shows up exactly when it plans to." <laughs> she launches she off says, the horse. Oh my God, Betty White! And she says, "Yeah, people have called me that before, before, forever." <laughs> As she's now beating the crap out of the kingpin. <laughs> He could have picked Meatloaf. Most people don't like Meatloaf anymore. I don't think Meatloaf but he was wasn't dead when I made this. Yeah. yeah, we it's originally were going to do this before I got COVID, and then I was too sick to record this. So it's... yeah, and then Meatloaf died. You killed it, him. And with all these other fat guys in there, he would have been perfect because they could have also brought in Louis Anderson. I think Louis Anderson. I would think have been we great. Louis Anderson too. Although and, weirdly enough, yeah. Disney Plus recommended me a show that has Louis Anderson and drag on it. Yeah, I, I, I see some clips of that. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah, it's got Zach Galifianakis in it. It actually looks really good. And I, it was just weird because, I mean, I've not heard him do anything for forever. And then, like, two days after he dies, Disney's like, hey, we got this show you want to watch? And they're like, yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> yeah, I probably will, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably will watch it. So <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to make fun of it, but we can't. It's Louis Anderson. Do you yeah, we all so, yeah I'm mad now. I'm unhappy that there's something that you recommended to me in mainstream that I might enjoy. I could so, actually bitch about Meatloaf for a long time, but I can't bitch about Louis Anderson. But can you bitch about like actual Meatloaf? <laughs> can I bitch about Louis Anderson eating Meatloaf? <laughs> and, <laughs> but can we also bitch about Bastion Booger fucking The Miz? <laughs> As The Miz is still I mean, staying in the room, really confused. We're not going to bit, we're not gonna a bitch about it, but people aren't going to be happy. <laughs> and most people are The Miz. <laughs> Definitely. But the Miz has chosen not to leave. He's still standing near the audience, near the crashed moon with the Rocketeer stuck in its eye, going, What the fuck is going on? And then <laughs> Bernard Herzog is filming the moon with the Rocketeer stuck in his eye and saying, This is art. <laughs> He's saying, I came to play. 
And just then, Stinkor from Masters of the Universe comes to the ring and he's stinking out Betty White's ghost and the Kingpin. They're all throwing up everywhere. The ghost is throwing up ghost food and the Kingpin is throwing up a lot of food. Define define ghost food. It's like a full ham sandwich, but with like a little like tail on it going, woo. So it's like, it's like when the old space movies called like space food things because they were in space, like right. the spaceship. So this is space clothes, not just clothes. Yeah, exactly. But don't worry, to it's her classic tag team partner. She might not be dead, but she's had an out of body experience. So it's the ghost of Angela Lansbury. <laughs> it's come Again, to at some point, this could have been a, a, a meatloaf situation. And when <laughs> I picked the ghost of Angela Lansbury pre- she could have died between you getting COVID and us putting this off and then and doing it now. I hope those are words you'll be able to say a lot in the future. This could be a meatloaf situation. <laughs> yeah, it could be a meatloaf situation where I pick someone who was alive and then they weren't alive when it happened. But I mean, it didn't, weirdly enough, that's not what happened with meatloaf. But I mean, you know, what I'm getting that. And running down is, to the ring, it's Pace Landsberg Pot Pete, still alive. Greatest villain from Marvel Comics that has not been in a movie yet. Clashes with the Kingpin slimes him with all the paste jumps on his head the kingpin falls back out of the ring paste pot pete eliminating himself though but also takes out the kingpin so now in the ring it's just Stinkor and the ghost of Langel lansbury and the ghost of betty white that's a great tag team though <clears throat> it's true there's not, enough old, there's not enough old ladies in wrestling i, I think all three of them that's a, that's a tag team. That's the new Freebirds. It's the ghost of Betty White, the ghost of Angela Lansbury, and Stinkor. <laughs> all ladies. <laughs> all old ladies. Now, Do they ever point out, is Stinkor a man or a woman? Stinkor's a man. They, uh, they Well, in the, the 2001 series, they pointed out. Because we meet a female one. <clears throat> you, watched the, you watched the new one, right? Yeah. Is, is Stinkor in the new one? Yep. Yeah, is he yeah. a man in the new one? Uh, well, then we don't necessarily know because it's just a monster hiding in a garbage pile. Is he... <laughs> uh, those are the things where out of reference things make you feel like you should watch something because you just want to see a really high-end cartoon where there's a, a man skunk hiding in a garbage pile. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so there's a fight scene. They go to try to find something in the garbage pile. The stinkor is in it and says, this is my precious! And they have to fight him. <clears throat> But uh, fuck those uh, those beta boys on the internet who couldn't handle that He-Man series. They, they can go watch the little kidsy one that's out on Netflix. Revolutions was great. Fuck them. I'm not even here to have them argue me and change my mind. I'm just going to say, fuck them. Revolutions was great. Hey, man. <clears throat> I'm on your side. I've not seen it, but that stink or scene sounds good. <laughs> but hey, man. I'm an all-star. Get your game on. <laughs> Whatever happened to fucking Smash Mouth? I bet you Day died. Oh, man, you don't know what happened to them recently? No, what happened to them? Tell me. These are the things I know. That's why I asked, motherfucker. This is, they're, they're the one band that's so glad they weren't shitty enough to be invited to that When We Were Young concert because, like, a couple of months ago, the uh, the singer had a mental breakdown and he started to goose step and do, like, Nazi salutes on <laughs> on uh, <laughs> on stage. And then he just shouted to the audience at, like, a Darien Lake or something and was shouting, <laughs> I'll kill you all! I'll kill you! and the band decided to try to play without him and he would keep coming back on stage they were trying to hush him off and then he was like i'm quitting you know i'm quitting because i'm gonna murder all your family and then would again keep goose stepping and doing like the hitler mustache thing and <laughs> this is all i'm all true and then they they he finally left and he just sort of lay down in the corner by by the stage so then the guitarist tried to like sing for him and the guitarist said you know what fuck it and they stopped and left and left him there well that seems that's if someone were to ask me when all-star was a most popular song on the fucking planet how i would see the end of smash mouth that's probably word for word what i would have <laughs> yeah. said <laughs> they just crumbled and died and <laughs> <laughs> with all the rest of the things in the world that was able to like sort of disappear that was just a couple of months ago but they um and so then they said we're officially broken up we're officially done <laughs> band is on hiatus yeah so with you only having three things left i say things because they're none of these are wrestlers <laughs> and you have three hey, in fairness when i made my list i picked five wrestlers five well people 
but some of them were dead. So like ghosts and then five inanimate objects and things like the moon. <laughs> right. And, and what the, this, the snake. And the next thing coming is an inanimate object that gets an, it gets animated. And I haven't seen all of this movie yet, but I feel like I should still, but I've only seen part of it and I need to go back to it. It is the pair of pants from Slacks, L-A-X-X. Yeah. Some killer, I, uh, killer jeans. I like, you know what my part. favorite part? I, this is going to make it sound like I'm joking and I didn't like the movie because I'm going to say my favorite part about Slacks is that it's only an hour and 10 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> it actually it actually grew on me. I was, I was kind of be a bug by it at the beginning because uh, everybody, you know me, and I hate horror movies where everybody's like a fuckcard and an asshole to each other in it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how Slacks starts. But it because it's so short, this is what I was getting at. Because it's so short, it kind of gets its shit in gear like super quick. And then it becomes entertaining because then it reminds itself that it's about a killer pair of pants. Uh, it's amazing that it's a killer pair of pants. It's actually quite shorts. <laughs> <laughs> shorts. Uh, <laughs> shorts. That was the set sequel. That's the spinoff. <laughs> shorts with two X's. <laughs> yeah, it's two pair of shorts. Shorts. <laughs> shorts. <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Shorks in Venice. <laughs> My hat is like a shark twin. So now the ghost of Betty White and Angela Lansbury both have their heads stuck in both legs of the of the shorts of the, the shorts of the slacks, <clears throat> while I believe Stinkor is still there, just farting away. And coming to the ring, it's Gritty, the mascot from the Flyers, and he is throwing fists. Fists are flying. <laughs> he is punching those pants. He's punching those pants with the faces of the ghosts of those old ladies inside. <laughs> them, them, them fists slap. <laughs> Stinkor is trying to blast him with all those stinks, but no, Gritty is like, pow, face punch, takes him down. <laughs> it fucking throws him out of the ring. He, Gritty then absorbs the two ghosts. He breathes them in and spits them out of the ring only to have the slack stuck to his face so now it's just gritty and the slacks fighting in the ring <clears throat> coming to the ring it's dr ted nelson before he gets to the <laughs> ring he says to the audience don't shoot i'm dr ted nelson <laughs> and warner herzog shoots <laughs> exactly stands up while filming and says this is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Dr. Ted Nelson never makes it to the ring. Uh, just like the incredible melting man, he's gone. <laughs> he melts and someone sweeps him up in a dustpin. Then another dead wrestler comes to the ring. It's Mad Dog Bashan carrying an airplane door in his hand from that great story of when he tried to open an airplane door while they were flying with Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike that time they were in a plane and Ric Flair took his pants off and spun his penis around and said, I'm the propeller of the plane. <laughs> Which another yeah. dark, dark moment in, in wrestling. <clears throat> the mad dog Vashon's out there, but he's dead. He's not aware of this, but he's dead. <laughs> it's zombie mad dog Vashon with airplane door and gritty and a pair of pants. <laughs> that, seems, that seems right. He's hitting Gritty over the head with the airplane door to stop those pants, and it's weakening the pants. The pants split. Gritty's face breaks free right out of the crotch of those pants. Those googling eyes coming out. Oh! <laughs> That's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> As your last pick, and my last pick was Mad Dog, your last pick, Wetsuit from G.I. Joe, comes to the ring. Is he wearing flippers? full Full wetsuit. <laughs> flop, flop, flop. It's kind of like having that guy from Attack of the Killer Tomatoes on the team. <laughs> yeah. That's always interests me because my favorite was always barbecue. And he's kind of like the reverse of barbecue. So like the big bodysuit, but instead of red and black, it was like green and yellow was his wetsuit. Well, I, wanted to, I wanted to pick a G.I. Joe. So I wanted to pick one that has to wear a very specific outfit <laughs> that is not compatible to anything but a job in the ocean. <laughs> It takes a long time. So as Mad Dog is still pounding away with that airplane door, smashing it against Gritty, <clears throat> the, the pants have ripped off Gritty's head and he's thrown them out of the ring. The two broken legs of the pants then wrap around Wetsuit's head <laughs> and choke <laughs> him out. He, he yes. But luckily, he's got his oxygen mask on so he can still breathe. <laughs> he 
he can still. But he taps anyway because he's a wuss. <laughs> he tries no, he to get can't lose ring. with my tap out. I'm just saying. But his, he still his, taps out. His flippers get stuck on the ropes and he falls back out of the ring. After one flipper touched inside the ring, he falls out. His flippers hit the ground, <laughs> blinded because he's got those pants legs around his head. Wet suits <laughs> out of the ring. The only people in the ring left is gritty and classic. 1970s early 80s wrestler mad dog Vachon, father of wait 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 no there's some controversy here adam what happened because i don't feel like the slacks i don't feel like they have feet oh no they can't touch the the ground uh well Werner herzog thought of that he takes his shoes off he he ties (laughs) them to the bottom of the slacks and he locks them across the ground and says eliminated it's beautiful (laughs) That's a, that there now. It's official. But the moon is is sore and laying in the audience says, "I'm hungry." So <laughs> wetsuit th- takes off his flippers and sticks them onto the shoes of the slacks just to make sure that they're eliminated, and then throws them into the mouth of the moon so they're eaten, so they'll never be back. <laughs> Fair. And at that point, gritty kicks Mad Dog's dead body in the balls and throws him over the ring, throwing the the airplane door on top of him. The only person left in the ring is the way it really should have been all along. The new Riot of the Movies World Championship wrestler. It's Gritty, the mascot for the Flyers. (laughs) What a weird choice. (laughs) I feel if anyone is any more unstoppable than the Grimace. I mean, the Grimace was destroying through this match, but too bad. And too bad for us they didn't get to face to face which means at riot mania in april (laughs) gritty versus the grimace think about the storylines that would have come out of this uh i mean well that was we're missing out on um seth rollins versus roman reigns the only reason they're fighting each other is because they both had COVID all month so they're the only ones that can fight each other (laughs) and then that's um, dumb yeah, and then Bobby La- and because you know they have an old past, so they figured it works. And, and uh, Bobby Lashley versus um, Brock Lesnar. So finally, the uh, the two sides, the the Othello match we've been waiting for has finally happened because they're basically the same guy. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Incredible. So congratulations, Gritty, and congratulations to everyone else listening to this almost two hours of us talking. <laughs> <laughs> no one is going to get to the end of this they're going to quit at the sexual assault <laughs> i mean and so they should uh, yeah i mean that's appropriate happy royal rumble everybody happy the rest of your life bob <laughs> and congratulations gritty if you see gritty tell him congratulations can, can you see mascots i thought they weren't real <laughs> you can see them I can't see them. You just can't tell them congratulations because they might bite you. They might fight me anyways. <laughs> they might fight you too, as we've seen in the 2022 Ride of the Movies Royal Fumble. Thanks everybody for listening. I am going to go die now. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. What have they listened to in the day? Uh, well, good night because they're about to pass out now, I'm sure. <laughs> I can almost <laughs> guarantee you. All right. All right. <laughs>